Okay, uh, we will uh, start with the second problem. So, this component is little complicated compared to the first uh, example which we saw. So, design a drill jig uh, for drilling two holes of 10 mm dia on the given workpiece. So, this is the given workpiece with, uh, with its uh, various uh, dimensions. And this is the top view. So, this is the 95 mm is the length, this is the width of the workpiece, center to center distance between two holes which we are going to make this 20 mm and this is the thickness and so on so you, uh, you can visualize this uh, workpiece actually looks like a bezel you know the, the bus conductor's bezel you can compare this with a bus conductor's bezel so we can do uh, drill two holes exactly on the top portion of the component so as usual we will start with a rough sketch rough sketch of the drill jig which we are going to design so that that is going to give us uh, some um, an idea about the different uh, components so that we can even go for a rough bill of materials estimate okay we will start with uh, a rough sketch so this is the component and uh, as usual uh, uh, the i think this is uh, which we already used in the previous example so this is the clamping bolt uh, these are the uh, two drill bushes and uh, this jig uh, is a different type of jig. See in the previous example we used a channel jig. Whereas uh, for a co complex component uh, we can use a leaf type of jig. So this is a leaf type of jig. So this end is fixed and when you unlock the uh, 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 here this portion so this is the, it is going to open something like a door. So this is the uh, hinged uh, portion, this is the fixed end and when you unlock this part, it is going to open something like a door. So you can uh, uh, mount and unmount the component easily. And uh, this portion is also new, uh, you call it as a form locator. This is the supporting block, so we will be designing them one by one. So when you draw a rough uh, sketch, you will be able to go for a a simple estimate of the bill of materials. So this is the, uh, we'll be using a clamping bolt, one number, drill bushes, we know, two numbers, a leaf. So this is a leaf type jig. So leaf is the top portion. As I told you, something like similar to your door, this portion is hinged on one side. When you unlock this, you're going to open the top portion of the uh, jig plate. Okay, now, uh, what, are, what about the other components? Uh, other elements of uh, we will be using uh, four screws this is the locator pin and the locator so this is, this is the jig body which is made of a cast iron material you can also identify the different uh, material types okay fine now we will as usual we will start with designing a drill bush so we need a PST design data book for designing a drill bush which is exactly similar to that of uh, the previous example go to 5.100 so for uh, drilling a diameter of uh, say 10 mm dia so this is the uh, uh, that is we will be going for a fixed bush we will go for the long one so for 10 mm for 10 mm dia drilling a d1 of 10 mm dia uh, we, we go for what identify the different components we will go for l1 as 20 l2 will be 16 and as usual uh, d2 and d3 22 and 18 fine so this is what is being shown here so for D1 of 10 mm, I repeat for D1 of 10 mm, go for the long type of uh, fixed bush. So as you, as you can see, this is 20, L2 is 16, D2 is 18 and D3 is 22. Fine. Now for D1, uh, what is the tolerance? Then this is called D1 F7. So we have for finding the tolerance for a die of uh, um, Data, there is 10 mm for D1 F7. Go to uh, design it above page number 3.7. So, on page number, uh, sorry, we'll go for uh, first, we'll go for 3.9 because we need what is D1 F7. So, for that, D1 F7 for uh, D1 10 mm. So, D1 10 mm, what is D1 F7? So, D1 F7 is over here. So, as usual, plus 34 and this is plus 16. So multiply this by 0 0.001, you know what is the value. So D1 F7 uh, for 10 mm, for 10 mm it will be 
Yeah. That is uh, D1, it's not mentioned here. I think the, there's a printing mistake. So D1 is equal to 10. So as usual, plus. Yeah, plus uh, 0.034 and then plus 0 0.016. Similar to the previous example. Okay, we'll go for uh, D2. So for D2, you know. Uh, the dia is uh, that is the, the dimension is 18 mm. So for 18 mm, we have to find what is D2 H6. So for D2 H6, again go to design data book page number 3.7. This is 3.7 D2 H6. Uh, for 18, so this is the value. So for D2 is equal to 18 mm, that is this D2 is equal to 18 mm, what is the tolerance D2 H6 will be point, uh, there is 0, this will be minus, uh, minus 0, this is minus 0 0.013, so you will be going for a push fit. So drill push is done. Now, so this is, uh, this is again, so we will go for a base NFU locator. So we know uh, for a cylindrical base, generally V locators are used. But when we use a V-locator, the size of the drill jig will be enlarged. So in order to avoid that, we will go for a form locator. This form locator is the one which we are going to um, design so that we will be able to save space. Okay. So this is the form locator. As you can see, this is the top view. This is the, uh, you can call it as a side view. So this is the uh, top view. So. So this curved portion, so on this curved portion, the base of the component is going to sit. So we are going to place the base of the component is going to sit on the form locator with four, uh, with, uh, four, no, four number, no, the screw uh, number will be around four numbers. This is the form locator. Uh, so the, so this, uh, this shape is fixed, uh, this is a square shape. So on this, the uh, um, there is the base, the, the the base of the common is going to rest on this uh, on, on this space. So here, oh, here it is going to rest. So why they have chosen 42? Because the dia of the component, so this dia is 42. So we they have chosen this dia for the width of the, or you can say the length of the. Uh, form locator. So for the the length of the form locator, which is going to uh, carry the component, is going to be around 42 mm. So this uh, this the width of the of uh, the component can be chosen as the length of the locator. So length of the locator is chosen 42. So here in this portion, a part of the the bottom portion of the component is going to rest, or you can say sit on the form locator. So what about uh, the top view? As you can see, the top view. So this is 30. This is 50. Why this is 30? Because go back to the components figure. So 42 minus. So this area minus um, this area is going to. See, because when you study the component, you you will be able to understand. How much of yeah? So we'll go back to the uh, diagram of the drill jig. So as you can see, the form locator is going to uh, exactly. We can see it, is, it will be screwed, and the form locator itself will be uh, held rigidly. By, by by uh, inserting or by tightening tightening it on the bottom portion of the jig plate so here on the bottom portion of the jig so the form locator is locator is not only going to carry the workpiece the form locator itself will be attached or it will be screwed exactly on the bottom portion of the jig body so so we are will be using four screws how so you are able to follow this step so we'll go back to the uh, diagram again. So this is 42. I repeat, the 42 has been chosen because because of this dimension. So for this dimension is 42, and 
this form locator see this this shape is going to sit on this coiled uh, you can say in the form of a frame you know in the form of a wooden frame so these are the four screws here so as i told you imagine this as a window frame and this form locator is going to rest on this frame so you're going to uh, first attach the form locator on this uh, squared frame metal frame where of course it is made of mild steel material and then these are the dimensions so you, you can mark it the height will be around 10 mm the width of the or you can call it as the length also it's up to you doesn't make any difference so the this will be around 42 it is going to rest on this steel frame and this steel frame itself will be either it will be welded but in this case we, we are going to use four screws and we will be at i will be screwing or you'll be attaching uh, we'll be tightening uh, this uh, form locator on this frame and then we, this uh, these screws are even going to get inside the grooves of the bottom portion of the jig body fine so now we will move to uh, the supporting block so we require a supporting block see we already supported the bottom portion of um, of the either of the left hand side of the component what about this side this is this is going to suffer a lot of uh, cutting force right when i'm going to drill it so we'll be using a supporting block so we're designing a supporting block again we need the dimensions of the component so this is chosen as uh, 30 mm so this is 30 mm this is uh, 15 mm is given though we are going to uh, drill 10 mm but we can give at 15 mm i mean huge tolerance is of course given here so the height is around 35 mm the height of 35 mm so this is going to completely you know support the block so i support the component you call this as a supporting block okay now coming to the pressure pad why pressure pad is chosen of course for the clamping bolt so i think we know uh, the pressure pad we have to go to uh, design data book as usual go to the pressure pad page the design data book we can choose the uh, dimensions so here it is chosen as um, uh, d1 as to is chosen as 20 mm to clamp the work piece perfectly for d1 the various dimensions are taken what is d4 d5 d6 d7 and then all these values can be taken from the design data book from this so for 20 mm so they have, they have chosen 20 mm for better grip so you can note down all these values and correspondingly uh, the screw the, the screw tray dimension is also selected so it is chosen as m10 okay now we'll go to the main main part we'll go to the design of the jig plate so we know the thickness of the jig is equal to l2 of the bush similar to the previous problem So L2 of the bush, the L2 of the bush and the thickness of the jig plate will be one and the same. I think we know, I don't need to elaborate on this. So you know, the, the thickness of the plate is so 16 mm because the L2 value is also 16 mm. Now length of the jig plate, what are the length of the jig plate? So it will be twice the thickness of the um, uh, jig plate plus the length of the workpiece plus clearance on both sides. We will go back to the diagram. So the length of jig plate is equal to two times the thickness, or you can say two times of L2. This L2. So two times the thickness of the uh, jig plate, and then you have the length of the workpiece from here to here. What is the length of the workpiece? And then clearance on both sides. It is given as 10 mm on both sides. And then width of the workpiece. Sorry, sorry. The width of the uh, jig body will be the workpiece width. Width of the a uh, work piece and then clearance on both sides so this is the uh, length of the uh, jig plate it, it was found around uh, it is found around how much uh, 147 mm so approximately 150 mm and um, 
Delta of the work piece is uh, 95 mm. I think it is already given in the question itself. The length of the work piece is given as 95 mm. So this is 30 mm. So this 30 mm is only is going to decide what is the the supporting blocks dimension. So this is 30 mm and height also can be taken from the component. This is that of the supporting block. Fine. I will go to the height of the jig plate. What is the height of the jig plate? It will be the thickness of the uh, jig plate plus height of the locator plus the workpiece plus clearance. So it will be 16 plus 10 plus 42 plus 20. So uh, 16 we already know. What about the um, height of the the locator site of the locator is called the form locator so this is uh, around 10 mm so height of the uh, locator plus the work piece we know it is 42 we know it is 42 so this is 42 and then And then plus the clearance. Clearance is given as uh, 10 mm. We can also give uh, 11 or 12. So it will be around 888. Uh, 8, so 88 mm, so approximately 90 mm. It will be the height of the jig plate. What about the width of the jig plate? Again, it will be the workpiece width plus clearance on both sides. So workpiece width. This is the top view of the component, which we already saw. So this is the width of the uh, workpiece. So the width of the jig plate will be, or the jig body will be, workpiece width plus clearance on both sides. Again, this was as 10 plus 10. So if you choose 10 plus 10 here, here also choose 10 plus 10 here also. So it will be around 50 mm. And what is the design of the leaf? So length of the leaf is uh, the length of the jig plate. That is uh, 150 mm, 147 or 150 mm. And then width of the leaf, you know the width of the jig plate. So this is 50 mm. Width of the jig plate is 50 mm, similar to the uh, jig body. And then thick of thickness of the leaf will be again 16 mm. We already know what is L2. Okay, then selection of the locking uh, stud with nut. So this can be selected from this end at 5.64. And then you can also refer 5.65. You can note down the uh, um, the, the various details of the uh, locking uh, stud with nut and for C washer so leaf can be located by using a stud and then an allen screw with a C washer C washer can be taken from page number 5.94 uh, let the diameter of the stud is uh, 10 mm corresponding other dimensions can also be taken so uh, this is something which uh, we can can be decided by the uh, by the student uh, himself Okay, fine. So finally, we have uh, designed a leaf jig for drilling two holes on this uh, component. And you can also see how to draw a neat diagram. This is the top view, neat diagram, and then go for the uh, bill of material. So what is the uh, part name, material, and then the numbers that are required. Okay, thanks for watching.